DNA is a tool in the genealogist toolbox. As more and more people have tested, it's become a better and better tool. But it is not a tool that's going to be able to solve all of your genealogy problems. And in some cases, it's pretty useless as a tool for genealogy. Howdy, I'm Andy Lee with Family History Fanatics, and this is a segment of DNA. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and click the bell if you want to be notified about new episodes. Now, more than 20 million people have had their DNA tested, and this has made DNA a great tool in the genealogist toolbox. But there's some times where it's not going to help because there is no DNA to match with a potential relative. So let's look at what you can expect to find when you take a DNA test. We inherit DNA from both of our parents, who inherit it from both of their parents, and on and on back through the generations. So on the surface, it looks like we should be related genetically to every single one of our ancestors. But because of the randomness of recombination, we aren't. We also didn't get all of our parents' DNA and they didn't get all of their parents' DNA. We got half and our siblings got half. And some of that half overlaps, but some of it doesn't. Again, because of recombination, somewhere down the line, we will have descendants that don't match DNA with other of our descendants. So where does this happen exactly? Well, 23andMe posts some statistics on how likely it is that you share DNA with certain cousins. For instance, with first cousins, we share DNA with 100% of them, all of them. For second cousins, it's been statistically calculated that we share DNA with more than 99% of them. And so far, there's been no documented second cousins found that don't share DNA. So in effect, we share DNA with all of our second cousins. But once we get to third cousins, the numbers start going down. We only share DNA with about 90% of our third cousins. So there's 10% of our third cousins who we're related to, but we'd never find with DNA because our segments don't match anywhere. We both inherited completely different portions of DNA from our parents and grandparents and so forth. Now, by the time you get to sixth cousins, this is really the extent of where you're going to be able to match segments with DNA. And at the sixth cousin level, we only share DNA with 5% of our sixth cousins. So the vast majority of our cousins at this level, we're not gonna see in any of our match lists because they don't match with us. Now, I don't wanna show just probabilities. I wanna show you some real numbers. So we'll use me as an example. I have 32 first cousins. Now to some people that sounds like a lot, but actually in the last six months, I've met some people who have more than a hundred first cousins. And I was blown away because I thought I had a lot of first cousins. My wife only has five first cousins. If you are the child of parents who were both only children, you have zero first cousins. But back to the probabilities that 23andMe provided. I should be genetically matched to all 32 of my first cousins because that's how closely related we are. However, only 20 million people in the world have had their DNA tested. Now, let's use the United States and say that roughly 3% of the population of the United States have had their DNA tested. Well, that means of those 32 first cousins, probably only one of them has had their DNA tested. And it turns out, that's exactly right. I have one of my first cousins that has had his DNA tested and we match. So that is exactly what was expected. Now, I don't know how many second cousins or third cousins, and certainly I don't know how many fourth or fifth or sixth cousins I have, but I looked at some different population tables and some estimates that people have made. And basically, if you take the number of first cousins and you multiply it by five and then keep on doing that through each generation, that gives you a rough estimate of how many you have. And so that's what I used. So I estimate I have 160 second cousins. Now multiplying that by 3%, that means there should be five of them 
that have tested through one of the different companies. So far, I have identified three of those second cousins. Once again, when we get to third cousins is where it gets interesting. I should have 800 third cousins throughout the world. I share DNA with only 720 of them. And again, we multiply that by the 3% and it turns out there's actually about 21 of them that might have tested. So far in my research, I've identified five third cousins. Now, as we go down the list, we're multiplying each one of those cousins by five. And so the number of cousins increases dramatically. But because the probability of matching with those cousins goes down dramatically, and because only a small number of people have actually tested compared to the overall population, you see that through the sixth cousin level, there's really only about 300 people that I am going to have a DNA match with. Through six cousins, there's more than 100,000 potential cousins I could match, but I'm only going to match with about 0.3% of them. So what can you do to increase the odds of finding these second, third, fourth, fifth, or sixth cousins? Well, the first thing is if there are older members of the generation, your parents, your aunts or uncles, your grandparents, have them tested because your parents are more closely related to your sixth cousins than you are, and your grandparents are even more closely related. So if you have their DNA to use, you're going to be able to find those cousins a lot easier. The second thing to do is test your siblings and your cousins, because remember, while you inherited some of your parents' DNA, your siblings inherited a different portion of that DNA, and your cousins inherited a different portion of your grandparents' DNA. So some of your third through sixth cousins, you may match, but your siblings may not match. Likewise, they're going to have some of those third to sixth cousins that they match, but you don't match. DNA is not going to help you find everyone, but it can give you clues to find hundreds of people. So if you have any questions about your match list and how to find relatives, put it in the comments below and we'll try to answer it. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with all your friends.